bum, 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 bum. Hey, everybody. Did you miss me? Yay. This is a video about the familyfication of 40K. Familyfication. Yes, I made that word up. It basically is what happens if Disney were to buy Games Workshop and start making 40K movies and TV. Because I've always said that 40K can never be made into any type of movie or TV. And that is true. And it's still true today. But will it be true tomorrow? And the answer is no. Games Workshop is actively working to incrementally change 40K and from a grim dark universe into a family friendly universe. And I've been watching it happen now for 20 years. They're doing it very slowly, but they are doing it. If you go back to the 90s and read some of the Space Marine books, and in, then you will find that these are hate-filled, spiteful killing machines, which is exactly how they're described. Read the catechisms of hate. Yes, catechisms of hate that they recite on a daily basis. Hey, apparently you haven't heard about those catechisms recently in the last 20 years. They're not really uh, apparently popular anymore. Uh, space Marines sitting around focusing on how to bring as much misery and suffering and general despair to the alien and the heretic is simply not first priority on their list of things to do these days. Uh, hate, apparently, is really not their motivating factor anymore. But the way 40K was originally portrayed, and you can read it in every introduction, where it says, forget salvation, forget hope, forget the promise of technology. That stuff's gone. The only thing that should be getting you out of bed every morning is spite and hate. The absolute abject aberration you have for the enemies of mankind. You exist for one reason, to see them suffer and inflict that suffering upon them in every way conceivable. That is your purpose. That is your joy. That is your life. Where did that go? Yeah, that's not going to be made into a movie. Hell, that was barely made into books. I'll give you an example. Aaron Dimsky Bowden, a writer whose writing style I enjoy, simply could not write 40K as it was portrayed. Hell's Reach, specific example. There was a time when the chaplain comes across a wounded orc that was pinned and crushed and dying slowly and in pain and he kneels down just to stare into that orc's eyes to see the pain to watch the light go out of his eyes and that's a space marine that's hate that's what they feel towards Xenos. That's what makes them so effective killing machines. They don't just want to kill the enemy. They hate the enemy. They want to see it suffer. The, the bolt gun, yeah, gun, the bolt rifle was designed not just to kill, but to be a terror weapon. It was designed to horrify, okay? That's the original descriptions of it. This was supposed to be a one shot, one kill, not an automatic firing weapon. You shot it, it pops into a person, and then a second or so later, explodes covering everybody around it in blood, guts, and gore, and viscera to the absolute horror of 
the comrades, I guess, around them fighting soldiers, it's supposed to just send them into shock, okay? It wasn't just, this, this weapon was supposed to be the emperor's wrath made manifest, um, not just kill people. Those days are gone. Now, when a space marine leans down to look at aliens dying in pain and gloat at it to its face, this is simply too dark. I thought, hey, somebody's describing a space marine. Just to find out a few pages later, oh my God, his senior veteran sergeant calls him over to the side and says, hey, chaplain, you're too dark. There's a darkness in you, and it's infecting the crusade. What? Is what? Yes, you're too dark for us black Templars. You're just too goth. We, we need you to go to your happy place, chaplain. We need you to find your happy place so that we can all fight to die another day. You're just depressing us too much. You're too emo. That was probably one of the, if not the, most pathetic scenes I have ever seen displayed in 40K. Space Marines complaining that a chaplain was too dark. Simply because he stared into the eyes of a dying orc and said, let it die in pain. I'm not going to do anything to it. Ha! <laughs> At that point in time, I was absolutely sure I knew what the future of 40K is going to become. And that future is the Palmaris Marines. Yes, I said Palmaris Marines, because that's what they were originally supposed to be called. But marketing said, no, yeah, uh, let's try Primaris. That sounds so much cooler. What does Palmaris mean? Which is, I believe, the word that they were using. Palmaris means worthy of the palm, the laurel. The laurel that the Romans wore on their head that you see painted on so many ultramarine helmets, that's the laurel or the palm. And it indicates victory. Palmaris Marines would literally be translated into the victorious Marines, which makes sense since they were going to be helping with the Indomitus Crusade. Primaris means first in line or first to be made, which neither of those meanings make any sense to the existence of the Primaris Marines. They're not number one. They are, by definition, number two in every sense of that word, right? They were created second. They are the upgrade. They are what comes next. How can you possibly name them the first Marines? I don't know, other than they just think the word is cool. And so they said, let's call them Primaris instead of Palmaris. That's what I think. Nice marketing show. But for those of us who are educated, it's just one more, you know, poke in the eye of life. So... <clears throat> The interesting thing that I've noticed about these Marines and the way they're going to change the Marines of the future is the selection process. One of the reasons that Marines were so incredibly bloodthirsty, cruel, and sadistic is because they were bloodthirsty and cruel, sadistic, psychopathic children before they were selected. In fact, those were considered the primary traits that to be looked for in an aspirant. Belisarius' call, however, took a different approach. That was not how he selected his aspirants. 
he selected people that didn't want power. He selected people that didn't want to be Marines. And that is how he could be assured that they weren't going to turn traitor. That is how he could be assured that they would have restraint. They would be humane. They would be nice Marines. This is indicated several times in the great work novel, but most importantly, there is one passage where he specifically says that. One of the kids, I forget, on, on the, in the beginning of the book, wakes up and keeps running out of his cell. And he and uh, Belisarius is saying, I'm going to give you great power. And he says, but I don't want great power. And Belisarius says, and that is why I chose you. It's safe to assume that that's why he chose all of them. And that is why we are now creating nice Marines, humanitarian Marines, Marines that will not run amok and go berserk, psychologically stable Marines is really what they're talking about. It's less about the genetics and more about who did he choose? What was the selection process for becoming a Primaris Marine? And that's probably gonna be continued on as their tradition in these second stage Marines. And that's what's going to make this a family friendly 40K universe. These Marines are not going to recite catechisms of hate. These Marines are not going to sit around and despise the alien and the heretic and just live to bring suffering to the enemies of mankind. They're going to have restraint. They're going to have a conscience. They're going to be more akin to the noble warriors that a nice family-friendly 40K universe will be in the future than past Marines. So in this way, GW is going to give a nod to the canon of the past. Yes, we recognize you were there. You're old Marines. But these Primaris slash second Marines are the future. A future of hope. A future of prosperity. Uh, a future where we can reclaim Tyranid devoured worlds because I just figured out how, if your uh, other Magoses can understand, which is what he said. Apparently, he figured out how to do that somewhere along the way of <laughs> tempering with the Emperor's work on creating a gene seed. <sighs> yes, that's the future. So, no, 40K cannot be a book, a movie, or a TV show today. In 10 years, yes, absolutely. They will probably want to be bought out by Disney by that period of time. That's the future of 40K that I see. I hope you enjoyed that. Don't get so angry, all you people who want your grim, dark future. 40K will no longer be about the end of humanity. It will be about its resurrection. Get used to it. And see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.